You want to share? I've been carrying around in my bag. I've been carrying around you around in my bag, so why not? I'm okay with sharing, really. He doesn't anticipate being in this room for long. Not really a problem. We can also handle, courtesy of the fact that both, uh, that both, uh, that both Fargus and Thomas rolled uh, icon relationship dice, which would go to this. And as a result, those uh, those icon relationship dice rolls, the six for the the high druid, and the six from the great gold worm will trigger here. Some uh, simple inquiries uh, into the hopes for you finding like an adventurer who would be decently suitable for this will uh, direct you, and you can do this without uh, getting much information at all. Uh, will actually direct you to an individual, uh, a ranger by the name of Calorel. Now, uh, her being a ranger is what uh, uh, connects Fargus to her. She spent a lot of time in the wilderness. She does a lot of stalking. She cleans up goblins and kobolds who uh, prey, and orcs who prey along uh, smaller towns outside of Newport. But she is also known as a dragon tracker as well, who keeps an eye on dragons uh, and pays attention to their movements so as to uh, protect the surrounding environs so that the dragons, who are consummate predators, uh, they're at least cataloged to some extent. Uh, Fargus and Thomas are also both warned with her, their inquiries that uh, this Calorel, well, she is the best that anyone can think of that they ask, and it's a very quick recommendation, and she is currently in Newport. Uh, she is a little reckless, and uh, she has gotten into quite a number of fights in her day, uh, and uh, <laughs> she's not the best person. She has a uh, she has a dark streak, basically. But uh, if you're looking for anyone who might know anything about where a dragon might be, this Almarune, she would be the person to go to, and that's confirmations from both Fargus and Thomas. Sounds perfect. You know, she doesn't have to be the best of persons if she does what we need her to do. I mean, you've got the rest of the party around, so you're clearly willing to go with Grey. And uh, you would be directed to, like, her hangout tends to be a dive, a, a bar, uh, in the Haven. And you're given, we'll say, let me go ahead and think of a fucking stupid name, the Fox and the Hound. That's the name of the tavern. <laughs> Right. That is obviously a very important name, so I'm going to put it into my notes. <laughs> I, have done, I have already done the exact same. It's good. It's good. That'll uh, that'll be on the quiz next week. What is the name of the tavern? Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Did I write this down? Yes. And I'll go ahead and even uh, make a uh, a symbol for the fox and the hound to note basically where its location is. Such, such dedication. Yes. I'm so good at this, guys. <laughs> well, Fogus suggests that we head there now. I mean, that's Fine. what we're here for, so there's yeah. little point delaying unless Makes we sense. want to further explore yeah. the city. Just wandering around, getting lost oh. and robbed. Yeah, Fogus would not uh, like to stay too long in the city. I don't know this person. You, I suppose you two people will have to deal with her. Alright, uh, I guess. Make sure we don't get double-crossed or someone trying to take all the treasure. I mean, well, we won't we're... get any treasure if we don't ask someone where we have to go. Yeah, sure. and we're not going to mention that it's dead, so... Hopefully it will all go well. Follow your lead. Alright. Uh, we'll head off to the Haven. Alright. You folks uh, make your way to the Docks District, uh, passing through the administrative center with its large, tall spirals, and yeah, Captain was right. You can tell what the Arcane College looks like. It has this magical aura and feel to it. There's like hovering crystal lights around it. Yep, that looks like an Arcane College. Almost reminiscent of Horizon in that aspect. Ooh. Home. Oh, wait. 
not the right home. <laughs> and uh, pass out of the center, and it's a pretty stark difference uh, seeing the uh, dilapidated, uh, basically shanty district. Ah, uh, home. The <laughs> the slum areas of the Haven. And uh, passing through the Haven, attempting to follow the directions, uh, you'll eventually arrive uh, at the Fox and the Hound, where upon stepping in and inquiring, I presume, with the barkeep, you would be pointed towards a woman who uh, is at least six feet tall, a little less than two meters. I do believe their accommodation was heavily muscled, uh, has a bow, along with a quiver of arrows, twin axes, hand axes. Uh, she is uh, armored, although not heavily so. Uh, scarred considerably, although not so much on her face, just on her arms, uh, which uh, and uh, a bit on her lower legs as well. Uh, dressed as if she has spent a lifetime at adventuring and smells of the wilderness. <laughs> a lot of uh, foresty smell to her. Uh, she does flash a small smile upon uh, seeing individuals who would approach her, which would be you, although uh, that smile does carry a great weight with it. As if she's uh, seen... I'll be blunt, she's seen a lot of shit. She eyes all of you. You are Calarel, I assume? I am the one who goes by Calarel, that is correct. Heard a, quite a few good things about you. Quite the proficient tracker, I, I hear. You're not a creditor or a debtor, are you? Not right now, no. I, well, she, she that really doesn't matter. We might have need of someone with your skills. We are looking for something in particular. There is money for you involved in it, and we are just looking to get it done quickly. Alright. I'm open for jobs right now. What do you have in mind? Well, from what we've heard about you, you make it one of your jobs to track the location and perhaps the lair of dragons, correct? I do try to keep informed on such things. The smaller dragons, which live closer to civilization, they have a tendency to move around, so as adventurers won't hear of their locations and basically come for them. But would you perhaps know of the location of a lair of one... What was its name? Al 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 Marune. Al Marune. Al Marune. She pauses, uh, taps a finger to her chin. I do think I know where the lightning worm lairs. Yes, uh, she employs, uh, or perhaps just intimidates goblinoids. Uh, a small fort of goblins uh, surrounds a. Uh, a cave embedded in a hill. I've not uh, been inside that myself, but keeping my eye on it, I do believe I've seen a dragon flying in and out of there. A rarity, but uh, the goblin fortress does give it away. I've not known goblins to be so coordinated and so stagnant. That is good information already. Would you be willing to lead us there, perhaps? I suppose I could be, although I have no particular interest in fighting a dragon myself. Even if it may be one of the smaller ones, I'm not looking to die today. That's not what we would hire you for. We just want someone to lead us there and nothing else, really. Yes, we only need to find this location. How much are you willing to offer for this trip to a dragon's lair? Uh, let's say 50 gold pieces, man. 50? Mm. Compared to all the treasures that you could get from a dragon's lair, I mean, if you fail, you'll be dead anyway, so it's not as if you're going to need the money. 
Well, Name well, your price then. Well, you can pay me 50 gold pieces now, and then another 50 upon arriving at the dragon's lair and seeing that, yes, it is a dragon's lair, there's a dragon in there. How about that? Hmm. So, 100 in total. How about we do 80 up front and nothing later? That should be plenty. She uh, runs her tongue along her teeth. All right. 80 up front. I can do that. It's a five days trip. Uh, unless you're looking to uh, hire me for another day, then we should leave immediately. Works for me. And looks to the rest of the party. Let's leave. We're as ready as we're gonna get. Sure. This should be fun. All right. Um, Calorel will uh, pound down the rest of her drink and then uh, begin to lead you uh, towards the southern gate and uh, take you out of the city. And so, yes, 16 gold pieces uh, each it would be if you wanted to sp split up that cost evenly. Seems right. fair. And you guys can go ahead and look again at the world map. The uh, the trip uh, that she does note is five days, and although uh, she does uh, lead you along roads, it's worth noting that the Imperial Highway does not extend out of this side of Newport. <coughs> and uh, as she begins to lead you into the wilderness, uh, the roads uh, do get progressively smaller until they're basically just dirt trails. Uh, Calorel will explain to you that uh, the travel time isn't so much the distance as it is just a lack of accessibility. As well as making sure that, in this case, all of you are covered so that you're not seen by, say, a dragon flying above her lair. Well, I guess it's really happy to be out of the city and off that damn boat. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. You folks will, uh, will be making camp on several occasions, uh, even if you guys had lots of, like, fucking rejuvenation things. She doesn't. And, uh, she would be walking dead on her feet and not basically be able to guide you folks at all. Uh, as such, uh, you will be making camp, uh, four separate times. She does offer to basically keep watch, and if she does so, like, will help you keep watch. Like, one of you who might normally keep watch, you wouldn't have to. She would basically take your slot. Sure. Herbert certainly likes to sleep. He's a, an old dwarf. <laughs> eyes are not what they once were. So, uh, seeing as how I like to uh, randomly roll to see who will get picked whenever trouble might come their way, uh, if Manakai's number comes up, then we'll just say that... Uh, that the NPC's perception roll will uh, take effect instead of uh, Dwell Hiram's. Unless someone else wants to sleep in. I mean, you guys can organize your watch any way you want. She's just offering to help. Does anyone yeah, else sounds... really want it? Nah. I mean, right. Thomas wants to keep watch. That's I mean, like, the thing yeah. he does. Right, like, Thomas like, should. Like, no one else is being deprived from keeping watch. It's just trouble might not happen while Thomas is keeping watch. <laughs> In which case, I will order you folks like this for my 1d5 purposes. Okay, Thomas, why don't you go ahead and make a uh, perception <laughs> a sort of skill check for me, wisdom-based? Wisdom-based, I'm going to assume that my god background can yep. apply to mm -hmm. this. All right. <laughs> it's fine. Let, let's see if I do a repeat with the fishing rod. Uh, could have been worse. Uh, the first night... Uh, does pass uneventfully. Uh, there is a time, uh, say whenever like Fargus is like getting up, that uh, some wolves do come across that you uh, think that you might be disturbed, but uh, they think better of it and uh, do not interrupt you while you're sleeping. They feel the druidic aura of Fargus and lives. That is certainly an interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Fargus is. 
That's certainly an yeah, interpretation. Awesome. <laughs> the uh, the snowfall does continue, uh, much to uh, Calorel's uh, cursing. It uh, does uh, leave convenient tracks for you individuals uh, as you uh, step through the forest. And although uh, she can assist in not leaving so blatant tracks, the fact of the matter is that uh, with the nice snow there, and just gotta hope that the snowfall covers them up. Let's see, that's one day. Uh, you folks would reach another campsite, in which case... It'll be Leon. Go ahead and give me a uh, wisdom-based skill check to keep watch during the night. Spy with a scout. Yeah, that works as your background. <laughs> now I'm wishing I had the skill sh the skill bonus. Oh, well. Okay. Um, nothing of merit. Uh, inter well, nothing interferes uh, with you folks as you camp during this night. Um. Again, traveling through the uh, the wooded area, uh, you do get onto some cobblestone paths occasionally. You do pass a village of sorts, but uh, you're making good time as best as you can, really, traveling through these areas. And we'll hear him on his pony. You still have the pony? Took it with you on the yeah. ship. <laughs> sure. The pony didn't like it very much, but he didn't really. He kind of forgot it while he was there, until he wrote about it. He was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> That's the pony that but it's, it's, it's feeling you. better now out here it's same good. as Fargus really maybe they have a connection it's good ponies are druid in disguise <laughs> that would uh, him would be okay with that so, yeah, <laughs> if it could cost earth strength he'd be so, okay as long as he keeps writing you camp for the third night and uh, griffin god go ahead and give me a keeping watch during the night skill check this is a wisdom based one using your I suppose Survivor of the Survivor. Dwarven Games background. Okay, 1d20 plus And your three. level. 3 plus 5. Uh-oh. Leon, you wake up and Tempest fell asleep. Which is impressive, because Tempest doesn't really sleep. <laughs> yes, he's like all slumped over. He's got like a bottle of rare Dwarven brandy. <laughs> Something like in his hands. Just by the campfire. He he actually dislodged the wrong cog. <laughs> just turns Leon looks off. around quickly, making sure there is like everyone still here. Does appear to be the case that everyone is still here that you can see. Leon will sigh heavily, put his blanket over Tempest, and find somewhere to well, you know, keep watch. All right. So yes. And then in the morning, give Tempest a stern talking to. Will uh, Leon out Tempest's failure to the rest of the group? No, I'll keep it private to him. Okay. Tempest is under a blanket, just sort of, just had knocked out. He's like, wait, what? Like, how did I... Wait, hey, Leon! <laughs> oh, hey, Leon! Oh, this is a comfy blanket! <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get these in the cube. <laughs> <laughs> and then on uh, the fourth night it'll be Fargus go ahead and make a uh, keep watch check during the night I, I imagine your, your forest thing it, it'll be yep. sufficient for your background yes <laughs> <laughs> so natural one natural twenty like at, at some point like Fargus, like, witnesses, like, a, a group of bears at one point wandering through the woods. They, like, look at Fargus. Fargus looks at them. He thinks they respectfully nod and they keep walking away. Then there's, like, some more wolves that come walking. They look at Fargus. Fargus looks at them. They move away, seeking less secure prey. Uh, Fargus is so happy right now. Fargus says, I see everything in the fucking forest. <laughs> That's why that's Fargus so creepy. Is one with nature and is so happy. Yes. Now we've uh, simulated quite a bit of this, but uh, if there is anything in particular that you would like to do or talk to each other or talk to your guide, Calorau, you are welcome to do so during your travel. <laughs> yes, Manakai. <laughs> All the animals. The snow reminds you of home. It's nice, in a way. Yes. He also doesn't have to trudge through it, because he's a pony. Yes. Which helps. 
the uh, the pony does have a little a little bit of a difficult time getting uh, through all of these uh, areas that uh, Calorel guides you through, but uh, the pony does manage. And uh, you make sure. Sorry. No complaints. Good, good pony. Yes. Um, as you are all drawing closer, and the fifth day is uh, now here. Um. Uh, Calorel uh, draws you close and uh, advises you folks to keep your voices down. Um, the tree cover is getting thicker as you're entering a more forested area, a less civilized one. Uh, the combined the fact that there is a, a cloudy sky, deep shadows uh, fill your field of view. Uh, that uh, it won't be too long before we you all approach sight of the uh, the fort where the goblins watch over the uh, the cave and the hill and uh, although goblins uh, tend to be horrible at pretty much everything like keeping watch if they're afraid enough of a dragon they will do it she uh, guides you uh, through the, uh, the snowy woods moving nimbly uh, as she keeps cover, uh, guiding you uh, past one tree and another, uh, towards a hilled section, and uh, sure enough, you can see it, uh, maybe a, it would be uh, probably about 10 minute walk from where you're currently located. She takes you to like a, a half mile, basically. Uh, you folks can make out the signs of Fortifications uh, built around a hill, uh, basically like a wooden palisade of sorts, not a completely formed wall, but like little guard posts and watchtowers uh, located around a hill in this collection of hills. And uh, even at this distance, you can see a great opening, big enough that you think maybe even a hill giant could fit through uh, on one side of the large hill. Um, Fargus will sort of try to look for weaknesses in the fortifications, even though he doesn't really have any experience in this, he will still try to do it. Alright, give me an intelligence-based skill check using your level and no background. Yep. Well, it's made out of wood. Ah! Well. <laughs> it is snowing, <laughs> but it is made out of wood. <laughs> what, what kind of wood? Type of wood that even with the snow, you could probably set that on fire pretty easily. So easily that the fire might spread around to the other trees and then catch this small wooded area on fire completely. It's not that sturdy. Goblins are not known for their incredible construction capabilities, their feats of engineering. So even at this distance, it doesn't look particularly stout. Sort of like haphazardly constructed. And as noted, it's not a complete wall. It's basically like uh, fortified guard towers that are overwatching the uh, the hill. Ah, I see. Fargus does also not see, he does not see any goblins, but it could just be due to the distance, and they're also pretty tiny, so there's no telling where the fuck they could be hiding. <laughs> they're around, probably. So, stealth or what would uh, Calorel suggest we should do if we wanted to go inside with as little trouble as possible? Uh, Calorel says, "Well, the goblins certainly are no threat, but them crying out in pain or agony would just alert the dragon to the fact that you're here. If you're hoping to catch the dragon by surprise, then you'll either have to." Leave the goblins alone, or you'll have to kill them so quickly they can't cry out in pain. Hmm. Well, I suggest we sneak up then. And, uh. Yes. Hmm. And, uh, thank you for the, uh. Well, trip. Yes. The guidance. As you can see, the fortification as it exists out here is rather. 
uh, peculiar in nature, and I have seen a winged beast fly out of there, which leads me to suspect that would be the, the lair of a dragon. And considering that the dragon was blue, I would dare say it's either Almadone or... I don't think another dragon would have moved in. I certainly would have heard of that. They are rather territorial. Hmm. Of character, that'd be really unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> she, gives no, a pin- she gives a pensive look, taps a finger against her chin. You know, if another dragon did move in, double the horde. Then if you're dismissing me... Well, you co- you got your payment, and you did what we needed you to do, so... Yes, you can do what We couldn't you convince you to fight a dragon, I uh, I'd need a lot more than 80 gold pieces. Yeah. Hmm. She said, oh, well, I think splitting the, well, potential stuff in five is already enough for me. If I gotta reach my neck at least... So, it should be fine. No need, no need to risk more of us. So be it then. Safe. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't even finish the rest of the uh, uh, well wishing, and uh, she'll turn away from you, and uh, very quickly and capably, uh, she will vanish off into the woods. You too. Got <laughs> to see her leave, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Look at the others. Looking at the little fortifications. So. Let's uh, try to sneak up, I guess. Yes, you you go on ahead. I'll <laughs> give you support from here. That seemed to have worked well r- last time. Um, well, okay. So how close are we to, to these towers? A ten minute walk. Ten we minutes. Probably, Damn probably it. want to close a little bit closer than <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, probably it's, a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you can see the fortifications because they're fortifications. And you're we here. run for it. <laughs> <laughs> a ten stop, minute charge. Stop the, stop. Uh, the, stop the, the, uh, the snow here is several inches thick. Uh, it is a little difficult to traverse through. But uh, if you so wish to get closer, you most certainly can. Yeah. Fogus will still try to uh, sort of keep out of sight from the fortifications. I mean, yeah, we're trying not to be obvious. Yeah, sure. Moving from tree to tree, and yeah, yeah, trying to stay, trying to stay hidden. Why don't you? Uh, <laughs> indiv- no, no, there, there, there. there's no need. Uh, you can, uh, you can give me your super sneaky skill checks to move all sneaky like through these several uh, inches. Uh, the uh, the few centimeters of snow that are on the ground using a dexterity modifier, your level, and if you have a case for a background. <laughs> well, sneaking through the forest is sort of protector of the forest, oriented. No, yeah, it'll work. Survival a scout trying to not be seen while, you know, <clears throat> scouting people. It's alright, okay. that'll work. Griff? The only sneaky. Sneaky, I am sneaky. not. I'm just a dwarf, just tumbles so. for the snow. I imagine dexterity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. So three plus five plus three. All right. Okay. On the pony. <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with 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 those skill checks, uh, Leon and uh, Tempest can uh, put Fargus and Thomas in line. Don't step on that branch. Don't trip over those mushrooms. Don't hit your head on the tree. Keep a little bit to the left. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Oh! Mm. And just as he's about to trip up, just put a hand and just hold him gently before he trips up. Is Fargus getting scolded in his own environment. Yeah, Dumb. Fargus is a bit irritated at this. Tim was only getting like sort of silent. He sort of trips at the beginning and Leon just shouting at him and. It wouldn't well, be shouting. shouting. <laughs> shouting, it'd be like... It feels like shouting. Do you want to shout? No, no, no. Goblin voice. Yeah. It feels like Hello. shouting. Hello! Yeah. Okay. 